Good morning and welcome to this episode of Beyond the Photo with me, Damien Jackson. In this video, I'm at Minard Beach and Castle just outside Dingle in County Kerry. First of all, let's rewind to where it all started that morning. Well, I have to say, I didn't hold out much hope as I left my parking spot in Dingle that morning. I had been woken several times during the night by hailstones pounding off the van, and now as I left for the 15-minute trip to Minard Castle, it was hammering with rain, and here I was, looking for a sunrise. Five kilometres out the road, and a miracle happened. Moses parted the rainwaters and the sky began to clear. I was stunned. I could feel the excitement building that now at least I had a fighting chance of some colour at sunrise. This was my fourth visit and in the previous three visits beforehand I had failed to produce any kind of acceptable shot from the area. The ingredients were all there, the light just didn't work. Perhaps today would be the day. Minard Castle stands on an outcrop overlooking Kilmurray Bay on the Dingle Peninsula. It's estimated to have been built in the 1500s by the Fitzgerald's clan, and like so many other homesteads and castles in Ireland, it was besieged and destroyed by Cromwell's forces in the 1650s. All of the inhabitants of the castle were killed. It originally consisted of four floors was so structurally sound that it initially resisted explosive charges placed at the four corners during Cromwell's siege. Now abandoned, it sits above a lovely bay called Bail na Glock, or translated the Bay of the Stones. And as almost always with Irish place names, it describes the bay perfectly, with its beautifully rounded boulders thrown up by the sea over centuries forming the breakwater between beach and land. It's located about 13 kilometres from Dingle, out the N86, with a sharp right turn at the village of Lisbole, onto some small local roads, but thankfully you can type Minard Castle into Google Maps and it'll bring you straight there. As you can see, one of the most unusual features of this beach is the rounded boulders that cover the entire um, back end of the beach, if you like. And they make for a great shot when the tide is in. So this morning, um, I was looking to combine sunrise with full tide. Now I've got that, but I haven't got much color in the sky as yet. Hopefully there's a couple of clouds just appearing up to the right behind the castle there and they might take off some colour. Uh, sunrise itself is in about 15 minutes and I'm hoping for the best on that. Now for my first composition I'm going to get down as near as I can to the water and what I'd like to do is use maybe a fifth or a sixth of a second to get the water when the waves break against the boulders and get that kind of movement in the splash if you like. Um, as the tide goes out then, I might try and get some um, sweeps along the sands. But I'm going to start off anyway with the, um, with the waves breaking on the rocks and I'll see how I get on from there. I'm not sure if you can see it on the video camera, but there's a little bit of pink and orange hue coming into the cloud right behind the castle. So I hope I get some waves because this is the optimal time. So at the moment I'm on F, F14 at a fifth of a second and I'm at high speed continuous shooting so that if the wave does come in and crash I might get six, seven frames from the one um, wave and hopefully I'll be able to pick out one from that then. Okay, so here's a big wave. Hopefully I'll catch it crashing. 
fifth of a second, F14, here we go. I really hope that works out because there's a lovely bit of colour behind it. Good start for the first shot of the morning. I've been here four or five times in the past and I've never got colour. It's always been grey and overcast. So hopefully things are looking up and it'll progress from here. I'm just going to change my composition now and try and get a little bit lower because I think I've got a couple of shots from that. I just see in addition now there's a lovely reflection uh, coming onto the water as well. Now before I move I just get this last big breaker. So I've just got down a little bit lower and what I'm attempting to do is try and make the action a little bit more closer to the camera. Now I am getting sprayed on at times but I have the cloth and you know it's worth it. So I think that's a lot of the um, pre-dawn colour. Um, it's kind of gone out of the sky at this stage. But sunrise, when the sun actually, I'll just get one more here. And here's a big one, probably get wet on this one. Oh! I hope I hope it was worth it. <laughs> so to start with, this is the big wave that came in and gave me a right wetting. And this one is about the best from that low down position as I was trying to catch the little breakers coming in over the boulders. It's definitely my best shot from this location. But having said that, I haven't much to compare with it as this is the first time that I got a nice bit of colour around here with the full tide as well. The colour is mostly um, gone out of the sky at this stage, still a little bit over to the left and lots of colour behind me but that's always the way when you're shooting one way the colour is in the opposite side. But there is one more um, shot left here in terms of the tide being in. And that's that when the sun actually comes up itself, it should light up the castle. At the moment, there's no light on it. There was lovely color in the sky for the last five, 10 minutes, but no actual light on the castle. And I can actually think I can see it getting brighter now. And there's a low bank of cloud on the horizon behind me. And I think once the sun pops above that, it'll light up the castle and all the headland along there. And that should make a nice shot as well. So for the moment, it's a case of just waiting. The color seems to be gone. I'll wait for it to light up the castle, hopefully, and we'll shoot again then. Well, I've been waiting for the sun to come up from behind the clouds and light up the castle. I've just turned my camera in the opposite direction, out towards the mountains and pointed it down. And what's happening is there's a lovely glow coming out from under the mountains and yet there's a big black cloud on top. So there's a huge contrast there. And I'm just trying to get the water as it breaks. Again, I'm at a fifth of a second and F14. And rather than freezing it, I'm just trying to get that swoosh of the water. So I'm down at a fifth of a second. What I really need now is a break, a fairly big wave to come in. Not too big that I'm swamped, but big enough to give a good break over the rocks in front of me. Here we go. Yes. That's the one I wanted. Hopefully that's worked out. Yeah, it looks nice. Right, I'll switch around now and um, concentrate on getting the castle that's now lit up with a little bit of light. So for anyone old enough to remember Bruce Forsyth, this is like one of the um, Brucey bonuses on the quiz show. So you're after one thing, 
and out of the blue, this little surprise pops up. So, huge contrast in here, the blues and the oranges really make it. So, this was definitely an added bonus to the morning. So I've been really lucky this morning. You know, it started off quite dull. In fact, the hailstones were belting off the van at seven o'clock. When I came out then, a um, bit of colour came up behind the uh, castle itself. And now I see in the sky there's even more happening. And we're getting on now for what? It's 10 to nine. So uh, I'm delighted with, with it. So eventually the sun found a gap in that thick bank of cloud and came out and lit up the castle. I'm not sure about this one, it's half a second, it's kind of in between, it's neither here nor there. I think I'm sorry I didn't take out the 10 stop filter and look for really maybe smooth it all out and get a little bit of, you know, that white foamy action in the water. But it is what it is and, and this is what I got. So it's about an hour later and I've come back down to the beach and as you can see, the tide has receded onto the sand. My composition at this stage is um, these five rocks here that are here in front of me. I'm waiting for the waves to come in and then as they retreat, I'm using a two second exposure with a six stop ND at F11 to give me that two seconds just to capture it on its way back so I get that nice sweep on the, on the sea. Now I think what's happening at the moment is that I'm a little bit low because I'm not getting the sweep the whole way up the beach. So I'm just going to bring up the tripod to the full extension. And that'll help me see over those rocks and get the full sweep as it goes back. That's one I just missed. Right now, might get a jet. So two seconds F11, six stop ND filter. So here's a few of the best from that spot, trying to capture the sweep of the waves as they uh, went back out towards the sea. As I said in the video, I think I was a little bit late because was a heavy shore for about 40 minutes and I didn't get out in that and I think the tide receded a little bit too much but look they're okay they're still better than anything I've got from previous trips to Minor. So here's a very short slideshow of the best of the day. I really enjoyed my morning here and look, if you can get the weather and the tide all combining, it's a super spot. So that's it from me at Menard Beach in Castle. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please leave a like or a comment below. It helps the old YouTube algorithm to spread around the video a little bit more and helps me to develop the channel. So once again, thank you very much for watching. If you're new here, think about subscribing and you'll be notified of my next video. So until next time, stay safe and bye for now.